Welcome. Bienvenuti. Bienvenidos. Hoş geldiniz. Willkommen. Storytelling for a better world is the theme for the hour. And we're looking at storytelling. I'm imagining that most of you are involved in teaching secondary, teaching teenagers. But even if you're teaching younger learners or adults, I think that what we're talking about today is totally relevant and adaptable to your context. Storytelling for a better world. I'm inspired by sunflowers. I'm growing some. As I look out of my window now, right in front of me, they're small at the moment, but soon they'll be growing so rapidly. And maybe some of you have got sunflowers growing in your garden. So we're starting from small seeds today, talking about the growth and the blooming of stories and students and cross-pollination, sharing ideas and making the world a better place a happier place, brightened up with flowers. So here am I doing storytelling online, as many of us have been teaching online over the last year. And here are my storytelling and teaching online with some children. This is with the Hands Up Project. It's a charity that I work with, working with children, well, not only in Palestine, but all over the world. I'll just actually reach the website of, of that. Oops. Let's put it here in the chat. And um, so, yeah, I'm sure you're used to working online over the last year. Sometimes I'm working on Zoom, like in that last photo, where I'm interacting with children and I can see them. Sometimes I'm on Facebook Live, where I can be talking and they can see me, but I can't see them, which is a little bit like what's happening now. You're with me. Uh, you can see me. You can interact with me through the chat, which is great because we'll use the chat and we'll also use the question and answer box. But I cannot see you, but I can imagine you. I can see you in my imagination. And this is going to be a very active workshop. You can do uh, activities with me, not just writing, but even some physical drama. Even though you can't see me, you can choose to participate. So the sunflowers seeds are ready to, to be taken from the flower head and sown and begin to grow. The handout uh, for today is actually a chapter. It's a chapter that I wrote for this book, Integrating Global Issues in the Creative English Language Classroom with reference to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. So in this book, the different chapters look at different global issues. Um, the 17 Sustainable Development Goals, which many of you will be familiar with, and each chapter a different one. But my chapter crosses over these different um, themes, these different goals, these different global issue topics, because we can apply storytelling across the board, across the curriculum, across topics. We can find stories. And here I'm talking about especially traditional stories, stories from the world's oral culture, stories that have been told and passed on from generation to generation, sometimes over thousands of years. And these stories often contain wisdom, which can be the beginning of thinking and, and change. So my chapter in that book is chapter 21. Can you see in the slide, storytelling for a better world? And uh, it's, it's across the different goals. And that's how the chapter um, begins. And in the chapter, I say storytelling takes us beyond boundaries of culture, ethnicity, class, gender, and language, and can develop our ability to empathize with others whose lives seem different from our own. Maybe when we get to know about other people's lives, we can find similarities as well as differences. We realize that under the skin, <laughs> we're all very similar. We sense what it's like to be in another person's skin, which is a step on the path to mutual understanding and constructive collaboration. Together, we can make small changes, which can lead to big changes. I learned a lot from this woman, 
Dr. Alida Gersey, who's written a number of very influential books on people who are involved in education and storytelling and also in therapy. And she writes in one of her many publications, stories alert us to the possibilities of betterment. Not necessarily because they have happy endings. Old folk, old folk tales don't. Not all folk tales have happy endings, especially when you move outside of the, the European um, frame. Around the world, many folk tales are there as warnings how we should and maybe should not behave. But because the story evokes in the listener an if-only response, jolting us into the awareness that life could be different, both for better and for worse, we're reminded of alternatives. Through listening to the ancient tales, we're offered increased knowledge of various ways to approach the unfamiliar. What we do with this knowledge is for us to decide. And that's one of the things we're going to explore here in this workshop. Not only the story itself and the learning itself through the message of the story and the English, but also what we can do before a story is told and especially after a story is told, responding creatively to that story. And we can do these activities with stories which are written as well and personal stories. But we're looking in particular at folk tales in this session. I'm a storyteller, and that, that's my particular uh, passion, I suppose, is for stories that I learn from people from all different parts of the world. So here are the seeds. Let's sow the seeds and uh, see where we go. Hmm, global issues. I wonder what global issues you deal with in your classroom context and feel free in the chat to as we this workshop goes on to share any ideas that you have because you know the different curriculums syllabuses in your schools across the german speaking world more than i do so please do share ideas with each other about how these ideas could be applied in your own teaching yes of course global warming and, uh, and many other issues. Climate change. This is the topic that so many young people are so uh, becoming activists now in this area. Winners and losers. Multiculturalism. Fantastic. Fantastic. So we're going to have a story. A story that is from China. And before I begin the story, let me just show you uh, this. Yes, it's a pear. And if we were to cut open this pear, what would I find inside the pear? Perhaps you could just write that down. Thank you. Seeds. Seeds. And if you're my students, you might you know, give me the English word, but you might also give me the German word. And I could ask you, well, how do you say that in, in English? So this story is called The Seed of Justice. And I'm imagining in my class that some students will know the meaning of the word justice. So I will say, well, maybe one of you can tell me how I could translate the word justice into German. Ah, thank you, Mechthild. You were the first. The seed of justice. The seed of justice. Gerechtigkeit. Perfect. So here's the story. And before I even tell you the story, let me give you some vocabulary, some words. And the words will also help you to imagine the story. OK, so let's move. Look at the PowerPoint. So you've got the seed of justice is the title. And here are the characters in the story. There's a poor old man. There's a fruit seller. And in the story, there's the emperor. Yes, 
the Emperor of China. And the Emperor's advisors. Advisors. And in the story, there is, of course, a pear, a pear tree, and these three connected words, the verb steal, the verb, uh, the noun, the personal noun, thief, and the noun, theft. So already, with that vocabulary, you're beginning to imagine the story that I'm going to tell. So let's actually replicate what we would do with students. And I'm going to ask you to quiz me. Quiz me. So you can use um, the question and answer box. Have you got the Q&A box, Brigitta, please? And in the Q&A box, you can write questions to find out as much as you can about the story before I tell you the story, okay? Before I tell you the story. So you can ask me about that. You know, if you've got that vocabulary. You can ask me anything you want. You particularly want to know what happens in the story, okay? So not so much the description of the characters, but the events of the story. So ask me questions, listen to my answers, see if you can find out what happens in the story. OK, I'm just going to give you two minutes. I'm looking at my clock. Two minutes starting from now. OK, so please ask your questions. Is there a happy ending? In the chat. In the chat is fine. In the chat. OK, so does the old man, is there a happy ending? Well, uh, maybe. Maybe there's a happy ending, but it could be happier. Is the poor man a thief? Yes. The poor man steals a pear from the fruit seller. Does the old man meet the emperor? Thank you, Blanca. Uh, yes, the emperor is asked to for justice for this old man's theft from the, uh, the fruit seller wants justice. Does the emperor own the pear tree and the pears? No, but the old man offers the emperor one pear seed and he tells the pear seed it's the pear special he says that the pear seed is special it says he says it will grow into a pear tree with golden pears the advisors don't steal the pears no is there only one pear mm, there's only one pear that he steals but there's lots of talk about golden pears in the story does the old poor man get the leftovers from the pear and grow a pear tree from that? What a lovely idea. No, that doesn't happen in this story. Will the tree be cut down? Ah, no. Uh, does the emperor listen to his advisors? Well, usually yes, but not this time because the advisors are ashamed because all of the advisors have to admit that they, at some point in their life, have stolen or told lies. Will the advisor speak in favour of the poor man? No. Nobody speaks in favour of the poor man. The poor man has to show that he is clever and wise. Is the emperor kind and wise? No, not at all. The emperor is quite arrogant. And in fact, the emperor is shown to also be dishonest. I'm going to ask, answer one final question. Will the poor man survive? Mm. The emperor says his punishment should be death. Let's see if he survives. Thank you for your questions. There's more coming in, but I'm going to stop there. You're wonderful students. So the students have asked all these questions, generated so many ideas. Now, if we had the opportunity, I would ask you to go to a partner now and talk to each other and guess what happens in the story. But we haven't got time for that right now, but already you're imagining the plot of the story.
And maybe you can compare your imagined plot with the story that I tell you. After the story, I'm going to ask you to tell me if your, um, your story was similar. I'm also going to ask you if you would like a different ending to this story. And I'm also going to ask you whether this story reminds you of any real experience from your life, a personal story, something that happened to you or someone you know. Let's begin. It's time for the story. The Seed of Justice. Are you ready to listen? You can rest your fingers and just enjoy being told a story, just perhaps as you were told stories by your family members or teachers when you were a student. Enjoy the experience of being told a story, not reading a story aloud, but being told a story by a teacher who has learned the story, especially to tell it to you. Once upon a time, there was a poor old man. He had nothing, no home, no family, no land. Every day in the forest, he picked up sticks, firewood. He took them to the marketplace in the great city. He exchanged the firewood for a little food, some rice. But today, Nobody wanted his firewood. He was so hungry. Poor old man saw the fruit seller's store and there were ripe, sweet, juicy pears. Oh, how he wished he could taste one of those pears. And as he dreamed of biting into a pear, he found the pear was in his hand and he was eating it. Thief! Stop! shouted the fruit seller. He took hold of the old man. He led him to the palace of the great emperor of China. He demanded to see the emperor. The emperor stood in his golden robes. Next to him were his many advisers. What do you want? This old man is a thief. He stole one of my pears. He didn't pay. I ask for justice, said the fruit seller. Old man, said the emperor, you are accused of theft. And you know that the punishment for theft in my land is death. What do you say? A hungry old man looked at the emperor. Oh, great emperor. Yes, I stole a pear. But let me tell you something. You see in my hand, there is a pear seed. If you plant this pear seed in your palace garden, it will grow. Tomorrow you will have a beautiful pear tree filled with pears made of pure gold. Well, the emperor was a rich and powerful man, but the emperor wanted to be richer. <sighs> Come with me, old man. And he went with the old man and all of his advisers into the beautiful palace garden. There the old man got down on the ground. He began to make a small hole in the earth. Then he stood. Plant the seed, said the emperor. Oh, great emperor, I cannot plant the seed because I stole the pear. I am a thief. Only someone who has never stolen anything, only someone who has never told a lie, can plant this seed. 
So tomorrow it is filled as a tree with golden pears. You, O oh my emperor, you can plant the seed. I, said the emperor. Well, you know what the emperor was thinking. I will not plant that seed. I am the emperor of China. I do not get my hands dirty. And the emperor turned to his advisers. The first one said, not I, not I, O oh great emperor. I am not a gardener. Each of the emperor's advisers made an excuse. How could I plant the seed? I am far too busy. At the end, the old man looked at the emperor again. Oh, great emperor of China, this pear seed is an ordinary pear seed. It is not magic. If you plant it, it will not grow and give you pears made of pure gold. I told you a lie. But it seems, O oh great emperor, that I am not the only one who has stolen and told lies in my life. I am ready for justice. I am ready for death. Old man, said the Emperor of China. Today I have learned from you an important lesson about justice. And because of this, you will not die. You can go free. Remember, tell everybody you meet about the just emperor of China. The old man went free. And that is the end of this story. Is this the same story that you imagined? Very similar? Of course, you asked a lot of good questions and you got a lot of information. Perhaps there were some details that you had differently in your imagination. Oh, thank you very much. So my question for you is this. At the end of the story, the old man goes free. He doesn't have to die. But he's still poor. And the emperor is still powerful, as are his advisers. So my question to you is, would you like there to be a different ending to this story? How would you like the ending to be different? And you can see in the question and answers, there's a question there. How would you like the story to end. So let's hear your ideas. So instead of the old man going away free, is there anything else you would like to happen at the end of this story? Let's share our ideas and discuss them. Thank you very much. The old man should no longer be poor, you say. The emperor could grant him part of his riches. That would be fair, wouldn't it, when the emperor has so much and the old man has nothing. Now, one of you has says the old man should be the emperor's advisor. Why do you think, do you think he would be a better advisor than the other ones the emperor already has? Can you answer that question? Do you agree that the old man should become the emperor's advisors? If you think yes, can you say why? Other ideas. The emperor should sack his advisors. So maybe replace them with this old man. 
The old man is closer to the people, you say. So he would be a good advisor. He understands what it's like to be without anything, to be at the poor end of the society. The people with nothing. Mm. Oh, you don't like the idea of him having to tell that the emperor, everyone, that the emperor is just. Yes, I agree with you. The emperor should do something against poverty. Hmm. OK, somebody says, I don't think the poor man would be happier in the position of advisor. Perhaps he doesn't want to be a politician. So here's another question for you. If this old man is invited to be an advisor and maybe uh, in, instead of the, well, the advisors who didn't want to plant the seed because they were dishonest. What would be the result for this society? Do you think this the, the, the emperor's um, land? What would be the, the result if he makes this old man his advisor? So you've got he will not accept the position. OK. Oh, a child plants the tree and the pears are for all the people. That would be wonderful there. A sharing of the bounty. The fruits of the land are shared with all the people. Or the old man should be the emperor's gardener. These are lovely ideas. <laughs> Somebody says it depends on how good the old man is at manipulating. So you're getting a sense now here on um, on, on this webinar platform, it's difficult to have a debate or a discussion. But of course, in a face to face teaching context or if we're teaching our group of learners online, we can we can share ideas and the teacher can mediate or perhaps the students would be able to work in groups and mediate themselves, depending on their their familiarity with holding a discussion and a debate. But I can tell you, I've told this story many times live and even without my intervention, the conclusion is always the same, that yes, the old man becomes the emperor's advisor. And the consequence is that because of this, the land is ruled more justly. He's clearly very clever the way he came up with the idea about the pear seed. And he's able to uh, help a more just and fair society replace the old uh, hierarchical one, let's say. Hmm. Let's let's play with that ending. So can I ask you to stand up? Of course, you're free to stay sitting if you want to, but I'm going to stand up and I would invite you to as well, because even though we're online teaching most of the time these days, perhaps you still are a lot of the time in Germany. Um, we can still use physicality and it's important, isn't it, to move our body. So let's stand up and lift the laptop up to a higher level. So I'm still level with the camera. And to begin with, I'm going to ask um, you to be the emperor of China. And I am the poor old man. So here am I holding the seed at the beginning of the story and showing it to the emperor. And you're showing me that you are very high status. You're wearing gold. You are the most powerful person in the whole land. So we're going to make a freeze. So look into the camera. Look at me. I'll look at you. I'll imagine looking at you. You are the emperor and I am a humble, the lowest in the whole land. The old man who is hungry. Three, two, one, freeze. Thank you. And now let's reverse that. So you are the poor old man and I am the emperor of China. Three, two, one and freeze. Oh, thank you. And now let's go to the end of the story. And again, you are the emperor and I am the old man. But now it's the end of the story and I'm going to tell you the truth about the pear seed. 
And depending on the ending that you want for the story, you can tell me what you're going to do. You're going to give tell us the new ending of the story. You're going to tell me what's going to happen, and I will listen to you. So we're going to act now. So not only the body, but also the voice, the mannerisms of the emperor as you talk to me. OK, so. Let's make a freeze. I'm the poor old man. And action. Oh, great emperor. This seed is an ordinary pear seed. It is not magical. If I plant it, or if you plant it, it will not grow and produce golden pears. But it seems I told a lie. However, I'm not the only one who has stolen and told lies in my life. O oh, great emperor, I am ready for justice. I am ready to die, if you say so. What do you say? Thank you, great emperor. I accept. <laughs> OK, so whatever you said to me, I accept. I don't know what you said, but perhaps some of you invited me to become your advisor. Thank you. And thank you, Jacqueline Eckert, who put in the chat the idea that uh, students could type their alternative endings in a feedback tool, like a, like a poll. Uh, app, and they can like each other's endings and find out you know, in a democratic way through voting, maybe eliminating the less popular answers, which is their favourite ending. Fantastic. I'm going to sit down again. You can too, if you want. <laughs> So let's come back to the PowerPoint, if that's all right. So here is the shooting, the sprouting of those seeds. The creativity begins. You're using your imaginations and the sunflowers are beginning to grow. And here's a photograph of two students who are acting this moment out in the story. We've got the emperor and the poor old man who is being given the role of advisor and changing his posture. Storytelling takes us beyond boundaries and develops empathy. We've got into a Chinese story where we've got empathy with this old man. So we can imagine being the emperor. We can imagine being someone with nothing. And stories from the world's oral cultures deal with difficult topics. For example, justice, injustice, inequality and offer the beginning of a solution. We look at what's possible, the what if scenario. And then we can apply it uh, to our own lives. So let me now tell you a personal story. I asked you to think of a personal story that the seed of justice makes you think about. But often it, with our students, it's a good idea to move from the personal, from the folk tale to the personal story that uh, we've experienced. We can act as a model for our students while they're coming up with their own ideas. So here's a story that I'll tell you about my son. I've got two sons. This is my older son, Tom. It's a few years ago now. And it's a story about injustice. And like the story of the seed of justice, I'll ask you to tell me the ending that you would like for this story. What ending would you like for this story? So are you ready to listen? Great. 
My older son, Tom, when he was 14 years old in the English education system, he had to make a choice. It was May, it was the end of the school year coming up, and he had to choose for his next year which arts subject he would do, which creative arts subject he would do. Well, at that time, Tom wasn't that interested in the arts. He wasn't interested in painting or, or any of the other arts. So he, cho he chose the option that he thought was least arty. He chose technical drawing or um, graphic design, I think it was called, graphic design. And he finished the school year and the summer came. And that summer, as often happens quickly with young people, Tom discovered music. He suddenly got really into music. He picked up my guitar. I like playing the guitar. And he started teaching himself and he learned incredibly quickly. And by the end of the summer, Tom was not only playing songs, but he was also singing and playing. So the new academic year began. He went back to school and he started his studies again, but he was doing uh, graphic design. And although graphic design is interesting for many people, Tom didn't enjoy it. He wasn't happy. And after a couple of weeks, he came to me and my wife and he said, I'm really not enjoying graphic design. I wish I had chosen music. OK, we said. We'll talk to your teacher, see what can happen. And soon we were able to speak to the music teacher at Tom's school. And she said, I remember Tom. Of course, I would love to teach Tom music. That's no problem. Problem solved. But the next day, we got a message, a phone call from the school to meet the head teacher. I was working, so my wife Tammy went into the school and she went to the head teacher's office and she sat at his desk and he was off, she was offered a cup of tea. But as soon as she got the cup of tea, his manner changed. Tom isn't allowed to change. Tom has to stay with graphic design. He can't do music. But, but Tom really isn't enjoying the graphic design. We, Tom isn't really that happy at school. Perhaps he could give, have a chance to try the music. If Tom changes... Other students will want to change, probably. Um, we can't have that. It's too complicated. Tom cannot change. Well, my wife explained again how demotivated Tom was, not just in graphic design, but to be honest, at that stage, in all of his subjects. And music was the one thing that would make a difference, but it was a no. Tom became very disillusioned. So we wrote another letter. We, applied, we appealed. We appealed to the Board of Governors at the school and we appealed to the local education authority here in Exeter. And we got support from the local education authority. Even our Member of Parliament supported us. And the Board of Governors took a long time. The weeks passed. And finally, in November, this had started in September, in November, we sat at a meeting with the Board of Governors and the head teacher. And they listened again to the story. They said, we've looked at Tom's case and we would be so happy if we could change Tom to music. But now it's November and it's too late. We'll make sure that in the future, next year, from next year, children will be able to change after the first couple of weeks of the new year. But this year it's too late and it's November and Tom's missed too much, so he has to stay with graphic design. Well, we appealed, but there was no hope. Tom had to stay doing graphic design, unhappy. In fact, Tom stopped going to graphic design. He boycotted the classes and he did poorly, really over the next year of his education. That's where I'm going to stop. But I'm going to ask you this true story. How would you like this story to end differently? So could you go back to the question and answer and again, write down your answers. What would you like the ending of this story to be?
you see Jacqueline's written in the chat. Um, Tom asked his students if they were all happy. He was able to prove that he was the only pupil who had the desire to change. So it wasn't a problem to change. That's a lovely idea, J J Jacqueline. I, it's amazing how, because it's a personal story, your ideas have an emotional impact on me. Find a more open-minded, student-oriented school. That's how we felt. That's how we felt. The music teacher convinces the head teacher. OK, thank you. Tom develops a liking for graphic design. Maybe it takes time and he changes his mind. Mm. The head teacher created a possibility for all students to change right away. They did change it for the next year, but it was too late for Tom. Thank you, Tom, to be able to change courses. Such a nice boy. We'd love to have seen him happy, either with music or graphic design. Thank you. Tom can change the following term, get some help over the summer and catch up. Thank you for all of your ideas. And as I said, this is very touching for me. I'll tell you, I'll, I promise to tell you what happened to Tom at the end, at the end of this webinar. But right for now, for for now, I'm just going to tell you, uh, I would ask you what story you might tell. When I told these stories, The Seed of Justice and Tom's story to groups of students, I got incredible variety of different stories that they told. I'm going to share one story uh, with you. There was um, a student called Lily. I was teaching English here in Exeter, and Lily is from South Korea. So I was teaching students that came from different parts of the world to study English. And after hearing Tom's story, I asked the students, what story of injustice would you t can you tell that happened to you or someone you know? And Lily told a story about how she and another Korean friend were in London. And they went to a restaurant, and at the end of their meal, the staff in the restaurant tried to make them pay extra because they were not British. I was shocked to hear the story. So Lily told this story to other students in the class and they gave each other ideas for how the story could end. So I'm gonna invite you, if you look in the, um, if, uh, I think, Brigitta is going to share a link with you to a short YouTube video. It's only four fifty-three seconds, but you can listen to Lily, who's been talking to other students, talking about what happened and what she might do as a result of listening to their advice. Can everybody can everybody see the link? So when you've watched the link, come back, tell me you finished watching it. And then we'll continue. It's about 53 seconds. It is 53 seconds. Okay, so you've had time to watch it. How did what was your what was your reaction to Lily's story? Interesting, amazing, amazing how the alternative endings empowered her. Yes, 
I might never have known what had happened to Lily if I hadn't shared these stories of injustice. And she was sharing this story. And by talking to her friends, she decided to take action. Instead of doing nothing, she, with help from me, um, wrote a review about this restaurant, which she shared. And she also shared the review in Korean on a Korean site for visitors to the UK. Um, she felt she didn't want to contact the restaurant directly, even though I encouraged her to. But the main thing is that she took action. She felt empowered and she felt more confident that if the same thing happened again, she would know uh, how to how to respond. Marelke, yes, it's an immense injustice. I'm glad that she has another option to take action. She felt very empowered. And I think this is really important. So we're looking here at the the folk tale, moving to the teacher's personal tale, the students responding with tales from their own experience and getting ideas of how the story could change could, you know, of alternate endings. Now, how does this fit with global uh, issues? When we've talked about personal stories, we can now talk about issues that might be affecting us on a local level, maybe in our local community maybe at a national level, perhaps at a global level. And we might look at what's happening in the news, for example. So right now, if I'm thinking about the news that I've heard in the last couple of days, I might think about India and reports that I've heard that show that um, the poorest people in India are not getting access to vaccinations, not getting an opportunity to go to hospital. And it seems that huge numbers of deaths are happening because of coronavirus, because of um, inequality in the country and mishandling by government. So we could look at a particular news story. We might look at a news story much closer to home. I mean, if you were telling this, these stories with your students, which issue do you think your students would want to discuss, would be interested to discuss after looking at the seed of justice? I mean, that access to healthcare is also the case, not only in India, but in this country too, I should add. It's, you know, there's a definite correlation between poverty and risk of illness and death in the UK. Plastic and e-waste, situation in Africa, dumping waste. Yes. Yes, de depositing waste from the first world in poorer countries. Is that what you're talking about? Perhaps there's something in your own curriculum or syllabus that um, that, that could be applied in this way. Global warming, again, affects the people who are poorest more. Inequality, so gender inequality is something that uh, is a huge issue. And there are many folk tales that we can apply to that context as well. The treatment of refugees, um, absolutely. So thank you for sharing your ideas. Look at each other's ideas. I'm sure you'll get some inspiration. Um, I'm just going to share the chapter that I mentioned, which effectively is the handout for today, Integrating Global Issues, and I mentioned chapter 21. And there are actually um, four stories in that chapter, which with different techniques and activities that you could try with your students. And they're infinitely adaptable. The activities can be used with many different stories and types of stories. Look, it's almost ready to flower. Through mental imagery, imagining the world of a story, through drama, through exploring metaphor, students can voice what concepts such as justice and equality mean to them. When they go into that um, 
topic, they can not only talk about the topic, they can sense what it's like to be in that position, the position of the poor man in the story, for example. They have that empathy. Drama and storytelling is wonderful for building empathy, stepping into other people's shoes. Doing such activity allows for the possibility of change. And this is something we talk about so much, isn't it? And I think children are realising this now, ever since Je Greta Thunberg gave this wonderful model that a, a small action can be, be the beginning of something bigger. So where do stories fit in? And it seems that storytelling is absolutely fundamental to being human. It's not just what storytellers say, but also neuroscientists like uh, Antonio Damasio. Storytelling is something brains do naturally and implicitly. Storytelling pervades the entire fabric of human societies and cultures. So when, so when humans at the beginning of time were trying to find a way of passing on knowledge and wisdom, storytelling was the solution that was found and when we talk about memorable learning it's often in the context of a story so how are you using storytelling in your teaching are you already using storytelling to look at issues to look at um, morals and it's something that's associated a lot with younger learners at primary but if you're a secondary teacher is there scope for introducing stories of these kinds with your students to bring them closer into a topic that they're studying? So there's a, a point from Monica here, lovely ideas, but how do you facilitate the language students will need to do that? After all, English is a foreign language, they won't have the skills, what they may want to say. That's a really good question. Um, I think the, the language of that story, for example, the seed of justice, is quite simple. I think it is achievable and we can give students the, the support that's required. Um, perhaps after telling the story, we could give them um, the story written down as well so they can read it afterwards. If you feel the language is too challenging for some of your students, you might also give them a translation of the story in German, for example. Or you could even tell the story in German one day and then tell the story in English the next. But I believe this story is, is simple. And believe it or not, when you are telling a story to your students, they will understand you much better than they will understand a story that's recorded, video recorded or audio recorded from the, the course book. Because when you're telling a story, you're conveying the story with your body, with your emotions, with your expressions, you're modifying the story so it's appropriate for your learners. And your learners will um, feel a strong bond with you because you're giving them the story. If you see that they don't understand a word, you might offer them an instant translation into German. So you can support your students at the level where they where they are right now. And it might be unfamiliar at first, but when your students become used to this kind of storytelling learning, it's amazing the impact it can have. Um, the evidence is in the proof, is, is the proof of the puddings in the eating, so I can only recommend you to try it. Um, another person mentioned, yes, but <laughs> David, you're a storyteller, what about me? Well, I think all teachers are, we're all storytellers in a way. I think all teaching begins, has its roots in storytelling. And it might be something that we have to learn to do. But start with one story, as I did 20 years ago when I was teaching, and tell it to many different students. And then after a while, you might think, well, that works. I'll learn another story. For a long time, only I only had two stories, and then I had three. And then I had 10 and now I've got, well, to be honest, I've got hundreds, but it always starts with one story that you tell to different students that's meaningful to you and that you love. So, what students learn from a story is not what happens in the story, but in their response to the story. 
the insights offer students a chance to explore and imagine what they can do personally to contribute towards making their communities and the world better. The stories allow for a change in perspective. They look at the world afresh. <laughs> a field of blooming flowers. And as students share their ideas, they learn from each other. There's a cross-pollination. We can get students to bring in their personal stories and share them. And we as teachers have a major role to play in helping to change unhelpful mindsets and in raising awareness of problems and issues. So we're the editors of this book. Um, Alan, Alan Maley and Nick Peachy write this in the introduction. We have an important role to play to help students develop their thinking, their critical thinking and their creative thinking. So my question for you is how could creative storytelling tasks contribute to a project with your students about making the world a better place? And already I can see um, Jacqueline Eckert has written, I read Aboriginal dreaming stories with my students. And then they write an animal totem story about an animal they relate to. Wonderful. And these stories about animals and nature, they put us closer to nature. They are all these Aboriginal stories. I love Australian Aboriginal stories. They're so powerful. They, they tell us deeply about human nature, about our weaknesses and our strengths. The world is a sunflower. And when our students get engaged in stories, they become very excited and passionate about storytelling. I mentioned the Hands Up project earlier. I also mentioned, or Brigitte mentioned, courses that I run, creative and engaging storytelling for teachers courses. Cora Tesca, who's here with us, has joined the last course that I did. And uh, thank you for being here today, Cora. And meeting teachers from different parts of the world can be very enriching as well. Teachers from all over the world join the courses. We've had teachers from who are working in China, right across to Brazil, in the States, in Canada, all around Europe, um, Nepal, uh, Nigeria. It's, it's just a rich meeting of mind. So do consider joining one of my forthcoming courses. I haven't got dates at the moment, but if you're interested, drop me an email and I'll put you on my mailing list. There'll be a course in the summer. And there's some links for today. Uh, my book, Storytelling with Our Students, is all about developing as a classroom storyteller, developing your students. That's the resource that I shared earlier. There's another chapter in another British Council book creating an inclusive school environment. And that's one of the things we'll be looking at at my next webinar. I think that's gonna be in September. And there's my website, email address. I've got a big YouTube channel with lots of stories to learn. And I mentioned the C group, the creative group, creativity group, if you're interested in creativity in English language teaching, come and join us. <laughs>